So hi everybody and welcome to my tiny little garage. This is an awful big truck for this garage, but it fits and it gets the job done. And I like keeping things fairly simple. But today um, it's January in Colorado and typical Colorado, the weather can be snowy one day and sunny the next. So there's snow outside and temperatures are in the forties right now. Gonna get up into the 50 degree range. So I'm gonna take advantage of some of that nice weather and do a little work here on the electrical system under the hood of the truck. Do you have a wiring mess under your hood? Do you think you might want to install some accessories that require power directly from the battery? Uh, are you concerned that your vehicle might catch on fire? Well, I have all of those concerns as well. And I'm gonna to try to solve my problems today with this V-Gate battery terminal kit. Uh, this is a kit that attaches to your battery posts and has lug attachments for it so that you can attach several electrical loads to it, both on the positive and negative side. Uh, this isn't paid, it's not sponsored. I went out looking for the best solution for my rig here and this is what I came up with. So I'm going to install this today I'll show you a few things as I'm going along and I'll give you my impressions with how it works. So this is my 2018 Ford F-350, uh, one ton for holding my truck camper. And uh, I've installed a few accessories on it that require some power. I have uh, lights up here in the bumper. I've got uh, two pairs of those, a wider angle and a spotlight. I have an air compressor an ARB single unit installed over here. I've also recently added a new winch to the front bumper. This is a uh, 17,000 pound anvil winch. I also plan to install some things in the future. I may install a second air compressor over here to run in parallel. I may install some additional lighting and uh, probably most critically, I plan to install a DC to DC charger that will be able to charge my truck camper batteries at a much higher rate than you can through the plug. And all of these require connections to the battery. Now this vehicle has what they call upfitter switches, which are some switches located in the cab that power some relays. So several items, especially low current items, can be powered directly out of this relay box right here, which is very handy. But some things require more current than that can put out. Certainly the winch does, as well as the air compressor. And those things either connect directly to the battery or through a relay that's hooked up to an upfitter switch. And then that relay controls power directly from the battery. I have a single battery in this truck and it just has the standard posts for positive and negative. The positive has a uh, stud on it with a nut so I can attach some devices to it. But as you can see here with the compressor and the light and the two wires for the truck along with the winch, it's gotten very crowded here. Uh, these connectors are, you know, they're adequate for normal use, but they're, they're kind of flimsy, kind of small. The negative side, unfortunately, doesn't have any studs at all. This nut is strictly uh, wedged to tighten this down and you don't want to attach an electrical load to that. It has a couple wires here that connect to a lug on the chassis, so I've had to hook my negative devices up to this lug. That's really not adequate uh, because the connection to the battery is not through a particularly robust wire. Again, good enough for the typical truck use, but when it comes to a winch or high amperage DC charging, you need something more robust, a heavier wire to connect to the chassis. So uh, I need to also figure out a way here to attach multiple wires. What I purchased off Amazon after looking around is this V-Gate battery terminal set. And uh, online, this looked like a, a really well-built uh, battery terminal connection. We'll get a closer look at it here in a second. So they are well packaged here and, and nicely wrapped in foam, well protected. Uh, you get a plus and a minus, and they are slightly different. The plus is a slightly larger diameter hole than the minus, which is normal on a 
a standard, at least US battery. I think many European battery posts are also of that size. This supposedly meets the SAE, Society of Automotive Engineers, and as well as uh, German and European standards. So should work in many applications. I'll also say they have some different configurations of this, which I'll talk about in a minute. But first I wanna show you this specific battery terminal. So this one um, is a terminal that includes, they, they call it a 12 way. So there are six studs in here with nuts on them. And you can, these are all fairly tight. There's one that's loose. Uh, you can put lugs down on top of these and tighten them down and uh, capture lugs that way. And you can use some pretty large diameter wiring doing that. Uh, these studs also have a hex drive and you can see there are holes in the side. Those holes go all the way through, but then you've got six other options to attach wires, capturing them underneath these studs. And then you can use a combination. So you could put a wire in the hole here, tighten the stud down, and then put a lug on top and tighten the nut down. So a lot of different options there. Uh, the construction quality seems quite good. It's uh, reportedly made from a solid piece of 6061 aluminum. Certainly looks that way. Uh, looks like it's computer machined. You can see some of the machine marks in it very faintly there. But there's chamfers on all of the edges. Uh, the quality really, really looks quite good. I, I don't see any issues here. Uh, no, no burrs, no machining issues. Uh, there's a nice gap there. You've got a hex head to tighten the battery post as well as these uh, terminals up top. Uh, there's a little insulator underneath here. I don't know that that's necessary, but it'll give you a little bit of padding between the, uh, the terminal post and the battery when you set it on there. Now I mentioned other configurations. So they sell configurations that just have the, the side posts here, or the side holes here with the, the uh, studs in them, no nuts on top. They sell a configuration that has just studs on top, and then it has smaller screws that go in the side. So if you have a lot of smaller diameter wires, that might be a good option for you. You could use the small lug mounts on the side. I opted to keep it simple. Um, and I've got a few small wires, not a ton of stuff, but I can use lugs that fit over these and uh, they'll accommodate the large diameter wires as well. I don't plan on using these side pieces here. So, uh, that's just a little extra thing. I do have some concerns with using those. They uh, will reportedly take up to a 2 aught wire. Haven't verified that. But I'm not a real fan of putting a wire in there and having a fairly small uh, stud come down and capture it. I, I think it would work. I don't think there's any big issues there, but I think it's much cleaner to go in and connect here on the top. If I were going to use the sides, I would probably want to crimp a ferrule around the wire to capture that wire before I put it in there and tighten the, the stud down. Also, I don't think you'd want to use a small wire in here. It would be kind of awkward trying to get that small wire under the stud and get it tightened down and feel secure about it. So my thoughts there. So this came with a small instruction sheet that I've already managed to lose, but I can tell you it wasn't particularly comprehensive. One of the things it talked about was how to tighten this up on the terminal post. This is, uh, I believe, a six millimeter uh, hex Allen wrench here. And they say specifically there's not enough torque, not enough leverage here to get this post tight enough. And they recommend taking uh, a handle like this multiple way you know, screwdriver here, putting this in to get enough extra leverage to, to tighten it properly. Yeah, it seems like a reasonable way that would probably work, misusing the screwdriver a little bit, but uh, if that's what I had, that's what I would use. I would highly recommend getting uh, a hex drive or a, a uh, you know, Allen wrench hex head, socket head style uh, socket. These aren't that much money, and uh, this will allow you to put a, a, a true socket handle on this, ratchet handle and tighten it properly. It will also allow you to put a torque wrench on this and uh, torque it to some specs. They don't provide any specs, but yeah, it's something that would give you the option to do that if you're being particularly uh, detailed about how you assemble this. 
I've talked about the features of this and uh, how it's supposed to function, but let's take a look at it on the battery here. Um, I have plenty of room on this battery, a standard lead acid battery here, and I could angle this in multiple directions. I wanna probably make sure I keep it away from being able to get the air cleaner open to replace the air filter here. And um, you wanna make sure that wherever this sits, that this uh, uh, post can't come in contact with any potentially grounded item, such as the, maybe this hole down here. Uh, we've got a, an air conditioner fitting over here, those types of things. Uh, so you might not be so lucky, you might have some protrusions sticking up here and it might limit you on how you can install this. And of course, you also then have to be able to get uh, an Allen wrench on here to tighten it. So you want to consider that, take a look at your battery and see if you really have a configuration that would support this type of, uh, of terminal block. Same concern here on the ground side. Um, you do, you know, this is a little more limiting here, but again, I've got plenty of room. You don't have to be concerned about shorting this out, obviously, to uh, the chassis, so that's less of an issue over here. But you'll need to be able to position it in a way that allows you to route the wires to and from the block, especially if they're heavy wires, that's of uh, an important consideration. When you do work like this, anything that you're doing working on the electrical system here is you should disconnect the negative terminal from the battery first and then make sure that it can no longer come in contact with the battery. I've put a rag underneath this one here uh, for a use at least until I start taking this apart. Uh, the idea here is that as you are uh, putting a wrench on anything or any type of a tool on the positive side, cutting wires, anything like that, if you were to accidentally touch some part of the chassis, you would create a short from the battery positive directly to ground. Uh, these things are capable of putting out a whole lot of current for a short period of time uh, that can result in a lot of heat and could result in injury or even a fire uh, if it were to get hot enough and catch something on fire underneath your hood. So uh, make sure you, you disconnect that negative, make sure it's isolated from the post. I think I'm actually going to do a little bit better job as I'm looking at this here now. But uh, do that before you get started on doing any other work just had the first challenge of this installation and it had to do with the uh, stock battery terminal so this battery terminal was crimped on to this main wire here it looks like this is probably the wire that goes down to the starter there's there's a couple of wires here one was bolted on presumably one goes to the starter and and probably one to the alternator but one of them was crimped on and it was in such a way that I needed every little bit of wire to be able to reach up to the, the new connector. I had to move a clamp down below that, that was holding this to allow a little bit of slack to come in, but I'm not able to reuse this to bolt onto the new connector, so it had to come off. And uh, it involved using some vice grips, pliers, uh, screwdriver to do a little bit of prying, but uh, just a little bit of everything to, to get it off. It, it did go okay, but it took a bit of work. They certainly didn't want this connection to accidentally come loose, and uh, they made sure of that. I have a similar type of connection over here on the negative side, and the only difference over here is that I do have some extra wire. Both of these are crimped underneath that connection there. I've kind of pulled it apart to get a look at it. I do have extra here, so rather than trying to tear this apart, I'm just going to go ahead and cut the wires, strip them back a little bit, and then be able to crimp on the, uh, the new lugs that'll go onto this terminal up here. So I want to take a short break here. I have now got the terminals in place and I've restored the uh, OEM wiring here on the positive and the negative sides. The next thing I'm going to do is reroute my accessory wiring. I'm going to shorten up the wires that come from the winch and hook all of that up here. Well, this project is done. I'm really happy with how it turned out. You probably noticed I'm not in my garage anymore. And in fact, uh, I've now jumped to the next day. So I ended up getting uh, a little more in depth on a few of the wiring issues that I had. I decided to completely tear apart the ARB harness to rewire the lights, clean all of that up and make it a really nice installation. So that took me into the evening, got a little bit dark for, for recording and uh, 
So I figured I'd go ahead and just wrap this up today. Uh, I'm gonna give you my impressions on this, which are definitely a big thumbs up. But before I do, if you wouldn't mind pressing that subscribe button, if you enjoyed this and you'd like to see some more content like this, a few more of our travels and adventures, I'd love to share them with you. So please come on along. Also, if you hit like, that'll help uh, get us visible to a few other folks that might also be interested in uh, some of this content. So as you can see, I have some large diameter cables here. Uh, we have the two OEM connections. One, I had to redo a new, uh, a new terminal on the end of it. This is the connection from the winch. Uh, this is the negative side of things. Also came out very nice. Uh, again, some couple of the OEM connections on here, the winch cable, the uh, air compressor is tied in here. It has a main power as well as a small relay power wire that comes over here. I've got uh, one extra terminal on the, the negative side. I've got two on the positive side over here. So in the future, I'll be able to add, uh, add the uh, second compressor if I want, or the big thing I'm planning on is a DC to DC charger for our camper. Got room to be able to tie those in. You can see that I angled these in the, the same directions. And this really was just a matter of the wires coming up from the, from the starter, the alternator here, getting a good routing on those. Uh, same thing over here, getting a good routing on the OEM cables, as well as those uh, going over to the compressor. So uh, really nice. The only thing, only real compromise I have here is to check the water level in the battery. These interfere a little bit. I think this cap will still come off. I haven't tried it. Worst case, I'll just undo the cap, pick it up, check it for the couple of times a year that I do that. So I've, like I said, I'm, I'm really happy with the quality of construction. Again, the, the fit and finish on these is really top notch in my opinion. I do think if you had a number of smaller wires you wanted to connect, uh, going with the other style that has the smaller terminals on the sides would probably be preferable. Uh, this works out fine for me and I'm pretty happy with it. I may need an additional lug over here, in which case what I'll do is just double up this smaller uh, wire here with the compressor wire. They both go to the compressor. Uh, they could easily go onto one terminal here and that'll leave me a couple of extras. So I think I'm in pretty good shape here. I'm again really happy with this. Uh, $42, a little pricier than some of the other options out there, but in my opinion well worth it. You could use this for many things. You could use this in an RV for an RV battery, maybe a utility trailer, horse trailer, something where you need power. Uh, distributed around and you have a battery. They do make several styles. They make them for the uh, standard terminals you hear, see here. They make them from the screw-on side post. So there's just a lot of different options. I will put some links down in the description to uh, these as well as some of the other options and a few of the tools and other things that I used here. Well, thanks for joining me here. I hope you found this information useful and uh, please you know, check these out if you have a use for them. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I'm really happy with them. Uh, check back in some later videos. If I happen to have any issues that I'm not expecting, I'll report back at that point. Take care, and uh, hopefully we'll see you out there. Bye now.